Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk to you about this new MUDs as seen on TNG choice pack, which is going to be arriving into the MUD store on PC tomorrow, May 25th, 2023. If you're on console, this is probably something you're going to be getting sometime around the later part of July. So in this video, I want to go through and take a look at the price of both the pick three pack and the mega pack. And then I want to go through and take a look at the seven items that this bundle has as options for those of you looking for the pick three pack. And then I want to go through and give my overall assessment on the value of this MUDS bundle. So if you want to skip ahead to any of those specific topics, chapters will be listed down below. The first thing I want to talk about here is the price of this bundle. So this has the same cost as any other MUDS bundle, which means that it is just quite ludicrously expensive. The uh, choice pack here, which will let you pick three of the seven options this bundle has, has a base cost of just under 300 US dollars. Now, during the introductory 50% sale and any other future 50% sales, the actual cost of this choice pack will be 14,750 Zen, which comes out to just under 150 bucks. So that is, you know, quite, quite costly. And uh, to just add some perspective, you know, this, this here, this like $150 price point is the absolute cheapest option that this bundle has. And that's just to pick three of the items of the seven that it has. Now for reference, if I pop open Epic and I pop open uh, GOG, I have a really nice comparison to put that into perspective. So Star Trek Resurgence is a new Star Trek game that came out like a day ago. And that right now with the coupon that Epic has going on is 30 bucks. Now, if I go on GOG, I can see that they have 12 different Star Trek games, and some of these are really notable and iconic ones. And these are each 10 bucks a piece right now. They do get cheaper with sales, but uh, the point is that I could pick, you know, for 150 bucks, I could get all 12 of these Star Trek games that GOG has for 120 of that. And then the other 30 could go to Star Trek Resurgence. So for the cost of this choice for for a choice pack here for this tng choice pack you could literally go out and get 13 complete star trek games that are going to get you much more content you're going to have a lot more things to do in those 13 games than what this bundle is going to do for you in stow so to just add some perspective there and then if you are wanting to, to wail out hard and pick up the entire bundle, the, the mega pack, which gets you all seven of the options this thing has. That has a base cost of 60,000 Zen or $600. And during the sale, that will be 30,000 Zen or 300 bucks. And, you know, at that point, you can pull up like the, the global top sellers on Steam and you can see that 300 bucks would basically buy you like everything in the top 10, 15, 20 there. Like it, it just, it, it's crazy what you could get like gameplay wise for, for that amount of money. And you are certainly not getting your money's worth with either the choice pack here or this, this mega bundle. So just keep those comparisons in mind, you know, as I go through the rest of the video here, you know, the, the, this is a very expensive pack and Realistically, you know, it, the reason to get this pack is because you want some some ships on account wide unlock. And a question that I, I find myself asking more and more as I play this game is, you know, is is the value really there? And I'll probably talk about this more at the end, but I, I really just don't see it with this bundle. So with that bit of negativity out of the way, uh, let's take a look now at the bundle contents. Um, so we have three ships here. We have the Liberated Borg Command Juggernaut, which is a lockbox ship. I should also note, it's one of the cheapest lockbox ships in the game. If you go in-game and look at the player exchange, and you look up Juggernaut, it is going to be extremely cheap, like 600 mil. And it, it just, 
doesn't have the demand that other lockbox ships have. So if you're looking to get the the Borg Juggernaut and you're only wanting it for a single character, it may be more cost effective for you to just go and pick it up off the player exchange. Now, that changes, of course, if you're wanting it on multiple characters, but I don't know what your situation is. Then we have the Sona Collector Science Dreadnought, which is a promotional ship. And I will, you know, of course, be taking a look at each of these a little bit closer as we get into the video here. But I'll tell you right now that there's a very good reason you don't see many of these around. It just isn't that great of a ship. The stats on it are fairly underwhelming. And in fact, the compiler science dreadnought that we got as a free anniversary ship just a couple months ago is actually a better ship than the Sona Collector. And then we have the Husnock Warship, which is in the Lobby store usually. And this is actually a good ship. But the issue with the Husnock is that if you're committing to get getting that on account wide unlock, you would probably want to get the Mirrodorn, the Mirrodorn Raider on account wide unlock also, because the two have a really good console set. And if you want to get the, the most impact from the Husnock, you really want the console off of the Mirrodorn Raider, which is going to then set you back a little bit more because that is available account wide as part of the Captain Picard bundle, which has a base cost of 12,000 Zen, but it does go on sale for like 7,800 Zen or 78 bucks. So if you get this TNG uh, MUDS pack here, you're probably going to, and you're going for the Husnock, you're probably going to want to look at getting the Captain Picard bundle also, which is just making this, you know, an extremely expensive endeavor. And then outside of the ships for the consumable items here, we have two T6 coupons. Uh, keep in mind the T6 coupons from the MUDS packs are bound, I believe, so you can't sell them. You then have an epic, a single epic uh, Phoenix token that you can get. 300 Lobby Crystals, and 10 Ultimate Tech Upgrades. So I'm going to go through each of these one by one now and break down the value of each of them. Um, but again, I'm going to emphasize the, the value for, for this cost here is really not there with this bundle. If you're wanting to put money into the game, there's probably other things you can get that are going to have a larger impact for your play style than this bundle. Okay, so the first thing I want to go through and take a look at are these secondary items, the, the consumables that they give as options from the uh, the pack here. So the Lobby Crystals, the Coupons, the Ultimate Tech Upgrades, and the Epic Phoenix. Um, and I just want to go through and show why basically all of these are just a really terrible value. Uh, so I want to start off with the T6 Coupons here. And when you're looking at, say, the Choice Pack, what the way that I like to consider this is that you're basically paying like uh, 50 bucks for each selection from from the choice pack. And when you look at two T6 coupons, that's, you know, right around 25 bucks a ship. Um, and if we do the math here, which I have over here, um, you can see that the actual price, like if you were to go and just pick uh, T6 coupons from the choice pack, which you can do. You could go through and pick the T6 coupons three times over to get a total of six. That would make the T6 coupons cost 24.58 uh, Zen per. Now, the issue with that and why that's not a good value is that these T6 coupons that you get from this are bound to you. So you're getting bound coupons and you're actually paying more than what it would cost to just, you know, buy the ships during a sale. So if we look at recent ship sales, like we had one, you know, just over a month ago, that was 20% off C store ships. And if we go back to the calculator here, if you do the math, that means that ships during a ship sale are 2400 zen per and in the past especially during like black friday they have done 25 percent ship sales in the past making them 2250 per so you're paying a lot to to get these t6 coupons from 
this month's pack. And I just immediately am going to discount them as a viable option because when you look at the math, you are paying more than what you would pay if you just waited for the next sea store ship sale. And that's not even factoring in that if you're looking at some bundles in the sea store, that's going to make the sea store route of just going in and getting that bundle, you know, an even better option than getting these T6 coupons. So I think it's pretty safe to say you don't want to get the coupons from the choice pack. Now, the next thing here is the 300 Lobby Crystals. And the issue with 300 Lobby Crystals is that if you're opening lock boxes, on average, you're going to get around 5.3 to 5.4 Lobby per lock box when you open in a large quantity. That is the average after myself and others have opened thousands and tens of thousands of lock boxes. That's the number we came to. Which means that you would need to open right around 55 lock boxes to, to get that much lobby. So with this selection from the choice pack of the 300 lobby, basically costing you 50 bucks, you're getting sort of screwed over because you would be better off if you just went and bought 50 bucks worth of keys, because you're basically, you're going to get the same amount of lobby if you actually buy the 50 bucks of keys but you're also going to be getting all of those items. So you're basically, if you choose this Lobby Crystal option, you are paying to, to get the Lobby, but not to get any of the other lockbox items, which could potentially end up even, you know, being a ship. So the T6 coupons and the Lobby are just immediately just terrible offerings from this bundle and should be ignored. Now, the 10 ultimate tech upgrades, I don't really know how to value those personally. Um, you know, that, that that value is going to be subjective, but that's basically buying those at like five bucks per. And I don't think it's worth it. Um, but if if you really want to simplify upgrades, you know, that that's your money. I personally, I just don't think that one is worth it. And that leaves the epic prize token here. And I just want to remind everyone that these epic Phoenix prize packs have an average drop rate of around 70 bucks worth of dilithium more if you're on console. Um, so if you really have a ship from the epic Phoenix store that you have been wanting, then, you know, this, this, this might be a good option for you, but at the same time, given that the average drop rate is like right around 70 bucks worth of uh, dilithium on PC right now. I would rather just buy the 70 bucks worth of dilithium because you're going to be getting how many upgrades, you know, which is then going to reduce the value of the, the ultimate tech upgrades here. So I, I would rather just buy the, the dilithium. So I get all those like rare, very rare and ultra rare Phoenix tokens also in the process, because if you just buy this or if you get this from the, the, the choice pack here, like you're getting that, that epic prize token, but you're not getting any of the other Phoenix tokens that may be of use for you, you know, would get you upgrades to use and get you other gear that you, you may potentially want to use also. So, you know, this is very much a case where I, I have to say that all of these secondary consumable items, everything on the bottom row of this picture to me just really doesn't have much value. I mean, I, I think the only one that any of you would probably want to look at is the Epic token, but for everything else, the value just really isn't there for me. And what that means to me is that if you're considering this bundle, the mega pack just really, really does not seem like it's worth it. If you're going for this pack, it's definitely going to be the choice pack and We'll see how good the ships are to see if any of those are going to be even worth skipping to, to grab like an epic token now. So let's dive into the ships. And the first ship I want to go through and take a look at is the Liberated Borg Command Juggernaut. Yes, there is a Borg Juggernaut in the game and it is not very popular. Um, however, it's actually not that bad of a ship. This is one of the few Juggernauts in the game. Um, most of the Juggernauts are 
generally quite good performance wise and this one is no exception it's just that people don't like how slow it moves especially with a turn rate of five and people just weren't a big fan of the visual so this is a 5.3 and it has a actually it'd be easier for me to just show you in the game here it has a uh, commander tack with command it has a lieutenant tack with miracle worker a lieutenant commander engineer a lieutenant commander universal and an ensign universal so it's it's not the the worst setup ever um command means it would work well for tanking or uh, like a torpedo boat um and the the miracle worker there does give you a couple options also i don't think you're going to make this you know very psi heavy you could certainly run you know like a lieutenant commander psi here if you wanted but I don't think it's a bad ship, and if you have the trade-off legendary Akira, you might be able to take advantage of that Merc Worker seating on it a bit better. For the, the ship itself, it's a 5-3. It's got five TAC consoles, two science, four engineering. Um, it it has an integrated plasma land or plasma array. It's got the, the juggernaut ray on it, which is not a normal lance, it's like a big bolt of energy. And it's a you know, it's a Borg ship. It really isn't that bad of a ship. The, re the reason that it's so cheap on the exchange, like I was showing before, is because it is the ship from the Borg lockbox, and people open the Borg lockbox in very large quantities to try and get those stuff packs, um, because that's where things like 27 to 47 come from. So as a side effect of people opening those Borg lockboxes still, the the ship is much cheaper than your traditional lockbox ships it's like half the price of the other uh, lockbox ships out there right now so it's a it's a pretty big ship as you can see it's it's really not not that bad the the turn rate is the the big limiting factor for it but i think the ship can perform quite well as a torp boat as a tank and the theme on it is plasma so if you really wanted to go heavy plasma wise with it, you could grab the the trade and the the stuff off the the recent Gorn Hunter Pilot Raider, and make a very good plasma build on this. And it also has this uh, integrated plasma lance. Let me see if I can find that for you. I keep calling it lance, but it's a it's an array. Looks like I can't fire it without having a target. So let me hop into a patrol quick. But again, it's it's not a bad ship. It just is oversupplied on the market, which means if you're looking to just get this for a single character, it might just be more effective for you to uh, get it off the the exchange. So here is the plasma juggernaut array, which looks pretty cool, to be honest. That looks cool. And if you have a bunch of plasma stuff on, you could easily boost that up to do a bit more. Um, but I'm on a build with literally nothing, so. For the starship trade on this thing, it is enhanced nanite repair. When using a captain or bridge officer heal on yourself, it will enable regenerative nanites for 15 seconds. Regenerative nanites will grant you 25 to 125% of your maximum hole regenerated per minute. So that that might be pretty good for for like a, a tank build so might be something to consider if you're looking to make a bunch of tanks on your account and for the console here it is disruptive topology matrix uh, this has passives on it for 17.1 percent plasma damage and tool regen and then it has a clicky that will deal uh that will be an area of effect on the target and nearby foes to the target It'll do plasma damage to them, add a dot, and it will disable some of their subsystems. So overall, I don't think that the Borg Juggernaut is a, a bad option from this. Um, in fact, I think the, the Borg Juggernaut is definitely something you would want to get from this because it, it's a fun ship to mess around with. It is a bit, bit slow, but for those of you that have been wanting a Borg ship for a very long time... There is one here in the game, and 
it is definitely something that I would get on account light unlock from that bundle. It's not going to be the best ship in the game, but it will do very well. And like I was saying, you could build it out to, to make it be a very effective uh, torpedo boat. You could make it a very effective tank platform, and it would work perfectly fine if you wanted to put energy weapons on it. For the cost of it, the cheapest one is 600 mil right now. So if you did want to just go and get it with, uh, with EC, if you waited for the next promo pack event, you could get it for probably like 30 to 40 bucks if you waited for the next uh, set of promo packs to, to drop in the C store, um, which should happen sometime in the next couple of weeks with the uh, the Titan being introduced into the promo packs probably sometime next month. So if you want to just get it for one character, it would be a cheaper option to just go and get the EC to get it. But if you want it on multiple characters, then the Muds Bundle is definitely going to be the way to go. The next thing I want to go through and take a look at is the Sona Science Dreadnought. This is a ship that I always thought was quite interesting, but at the same time was quite underpowered. Um, it was a ship that was very quickly outclassed, and uh, to this day I think that's a bit of a shame. The Sona Collector is a promotional ship. Promo ships are the most expensive ships in this game. For those of you not familiar, um, the Sona Collector has a Commander Science, a Lieutenant Commander Universal with Intel, a Lieutenant Commander Engineer, a Lieutenant TAC, and an Ensign Universal with Temporal Operative. And then it's got a 4-3 weapon setup and a hangar bay. Now, for the Science Dreadnoughts, basically all of them have that 4-3 setup with a hangar bay, so that's pretty common. All of them have a secondary deflector. And there's a few different types out there. Now, the issue that the Sona Collector faces is that the seating on it is not the most conductive for the types of builds that you would put on a science ship, especially one that is really EPG heavy. Engineering seats are really not that valuable for, for EPG builds, and this thing has a forced Lieutenant Commander Engineer seat on it that doesn't even have a uh, specialization on it. If the Intel had been on that Engineer, the, the overall ship value probably would have been a little bit better. So the issue with the Sona faces is that since its release, there has been Sea Store Science Dreadnoughts release that are better than it, and as of this year, there have also been event ships that are also arguably better than it. In the Sea Store, there is the Cardassian Damar Intel Science Dreadnought. This is a ship that you can get for 30 bucks or 24 bucks during a sale. And it has a Commander Science with Intel, a Lieutenant Commander TAC, Lieutenant Commander Psy, Lieutenant Engineer, and an Ensign Universal with Intel. Or, if you're looking at the, the options for things that we got for, for free, or briefly were able to, uh, then the Compiler from this year arguably is a better ship than the, the Sona Collector for the EPG builds that you'd want to put on it. It has a Commander Science, a Lieutenant Commander TAC, Lieutenant Commander Science with Temporal Operative, Lieutenant Universal with Temporal Operative, and then an Ensign Engineer. So for an actual EPG build, the Compiler, which we got free earlier this year, is a better ship than the Sona Collector Science Dreadnought. Now that doesn't mean that the Sona, you know, is a completely terrible ship. Um, this is a ship that I've enjoyed using in the past. I, I have a character that I used it on for a while. And to me, it was a really fun niche, fun ship to fly. But it, it certainly is hard to justify if you have things like the, the uh, compiler there. So the trait off of this thing is collect and consume. Let me pull that up in the traits window for you. So collect and consume. Activating any subsystem drain or shield drain bridge officer ability applies to instant pull, instant pull to all foes within five kilometers, dragging them a bit closer to you. After this pull is done, all foes within 2.5 kilometers will suffer a small amount of radiation damage. A portion of the damage dealt by this trait will be returned to you as a whole heal. So using drain abilities against enemies makes them or drags them closer to you. And 
it will then deal radiation damage to those that get close enough and give you healing based on the damage that it does. So it's a pretty neat trait. It's a neat concept. Um, I haven't seen too much practical use from this, but that may be something that is valuable to, to some people at least. For the console on this thing, it is the Thermolytic Injector. So the Thermolytic Injector has passes for plus 5% hold capacity, plus 20% power transfer rate, plus 20 Starship pull restoration. So not the best passives, but I mean, it's probably good for some builds. Then the, the clicky on this is the Thermolytic Injector, which will fire the injector at a target and it will cause a shockwave that gradually expands to 10 kilometers. That shockwave will deal radiation damage and then will debuff everything affected by it. This console by default has a two minute recharge, but if you have the Sona, all three consoles from all three Sona ships on the ship, then the, the cooldown is reduced to a minute. Now, the debuff on this thing scales up to minus 75 all damage resistance rating, um, and it lasts for up to 30 seconds, and it's honestly pretty good. Um, I have used this before, like right in the center of Hive Space Elite, and seen it debuff many things on the map there. But what sucks about this console, what's really unfortunate about it, is that it's limited to this ship. If the Sona console set was usable on any ship, then I would probably be using this console quite a bit more. But because it's locked to the Sona ships, that means that you could use it on this Sona Collector, the Sona Command, or the, the Sona Intel uh, cruiser. So it's only usable on three ships currently, which is going to limit its value for some of you. This does also have some unique pets on it, the Sona Assault Fighters. They're nothing that special, but might be fun if that's if you're trying to do like a Sona theme build. And the most important part of this ship, it has solar sails. It has an ability on it called the Deploy Consumption Array. It will, when you activate this, it will set your turn rate to four and you cannot increase it while it's active. It will slow you down, disable full impulse, but it will give you plus 50 Starship Drain Expertise, plus 100 resistance or energy damage. And it will then have a special effect where when you're receiving energy damage, it will build up a stack of thermolytic charges. And once it's built up to 12 charges, it will shoot a radiation pulse out the front of your ship, damaging everything in front of you. And then it will heal you based on 20% of the damage that it does. So let me show you what this looks like when these deploy. Um, yes, I'm, I'm getting cryptic right now. I don't know what just happened there with my ship. There we go. You know how these animation effects can be in so sometimes they bug out. And in that case, it made my ship disappear. Don't worry, though, they'll, they'll fix it. This ship hasn't been out that long. It only, uh, when did this thing come out? August 2017. Yikes. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's a pretty neat ship. It, it's quite unique. I, I think there's some some neat things that you can do with it, but you do just have to keep in mind that there are better ships out there than this now, especially for the science dreads. But if I was getting this bundle, I would I would absolutely be picking this as an option just for it being unique. And because if I wanted to ever get the rest of the Sona set, it would be nice to have this console, you know, to be able to use on those ships because that three piece does actually have uh, some some nice consoles in it. So this this would be a ship that I would recommend picking up, especially given that it's the most expensive ship in the pack. If you were to try and obtain it on its own as a promo ship, it would cost you probably 100 bucks to get. Um, so. I think given it's given it's unique things that it does, I think that alone would, would make me want to pick it up, especially if you're spending that much for the pack. 
So that is the Sona Collector. I guess I didn't show the, the stats on it, so let me pull that up real quick. I forgot. Take a look at the Sona Collector here. So, whole modifier 1.35, shield mod 1.25. The turn rate is 9, but when you activate that mode, it goes down to 4. Impulse modifier 0.18, inertia rating of 35. And like I said, it's a 4.3. And it does have a hangar base, so... I think it's an e chip, and if you're spending this much money for the pack, I I would get it just because of how unique it is. And the final ship that I want to talk about today is the Husnok warship. This is traditionally a low B ship, which means that it is going to typically cost you around 350 to 400 million EC on the exchange. And if I go back to the spreadsheet, that does mean if you were looking to get this for a single character and you waited for a promo pack event to, to get your EC, then you could potentially get this ship for somewhere around 20 to, to 30 bucks for a single character. But of course, if you wanted it for more than one character, then it would make sense to consider this MUDS bundle. So the Husnock warship is a really good energy weapon platform. It's got a 5-3 weapon setup. Old modifier is pretty good for, for a warship here, 1.3 or 1.275. Uh, shield mod of 1.1, turn rate of 12, impulse 0.19, inertia rating of 50. For the bridge officers here, we have a commander tack with temporal operative, a lieutenant commander engineer, ensign engineer, a lieutenant science with command, and a lieutenant commander universal. So the thing that really makes this ship special is the console set that it has. And when I talked about this ship last year, I really, really focused on this console set that the Husnock and the Miradorn have. Now, the one downside to this console set is that, unfortunately, only the Husnock and the Miradorn can use these two consoles. So the Husnock comes with the Heavy Particle Focuser Array console which has passes on it for direct energy damage and some resistance. And it's got a clicky on it that does some electrical damage. But the real special part of this console set is from the Miradorn console. And the Miradorn console gives you some crit chance, some defense rating, but then it has a clicky on it that gives you a ton of crit chance and severity for 20 seconds and will buff your Intel flanking damage bonus on the Husnock if you're running Intel primary by 33% for 20 seconds. And then if you have the two piece, it just improves the effectiveness of both consoles. Now, the issue with going for the Husnock uh, from this, from this MUDS bundle is that you would have to also get the Miradorn if you wanted to have the, the full Husnock package because you need the console off the Miradorn. And like I talked about in the beginning, the issue with that is that the Husna or the, the Miradorn is part of the Captain Picard bundle, which means if you waited for the next 35% bundle sale, that would be another 7,800 Zen or about 80 bucks that you'd be looking at spending to, to have the full Husnock experience. So while the Husnock is a pretty good ship, it's still one of the best beam overload platforms if you have the Miradorn console on it. It just is important to keep in mind that when you, if you go through and get the Husnock from this MUDS bundle, you're still going to have to go out and get another bundle to, to get the, the full package here. So just, just keep that in mind when you're going for the Husnock. So I've covered the console now. The other thing that's important for the Husnock is the trade on it. So let me pop this trade open a little bit bigger for you guys to read. This is Directed Energy Flux and... This is a Starship trait that is going to boost both Beam Overload and Cannon Rapid Fire. And I think the text might be a little small for you guys to read here. So let me make this bigger. Okay. So what this Starship trait does is it will buff your damage for Rapid Fire and Beam Overload when you hit Temporal Operative Bridge Officer abilities or Directed Energy Modulation, DEM, which is an engineering ability. So when you are able to activate the trait, it will give Beam Overload and Cannon Rapid Fire 
a 25% cat 2 bonus damage boost for 15 seconds. So 25% cat 2 is half the damage boost that you would be getting from attack pattern alpha. That's a pretty substantial boost there for, for your beam overload or your rapid fire if you have the room to run this trait. So that that might be another reason to, to consider going after uh, the Husnock from the Smuds pack here. If you're running a bunch of beam overload builds on your characters, this may be a trait that you would want to consider. Now for the Husnock itself, um, it, it can do a variety of do builds perfectly fine. Um, the build I have on this right now seems to be like four or five years old. It's really old, so don't don't try and copy this, but um, you could do cannon scatter volley on it. You could do beam overload. You can do rapid fire. You can do uh, fire at will. Like this is just a really versatile platform. And if you have that two piece console set, then it does have quite a bit of firepower behind it. So that is the three ships here. Now let's head over to my thoughts and like a recap on the bundle. So to recap, this bundle really is not the best MUDs bundle they've ever done. Um, if you're really wanting this, then I would only consider getting the, the pick three choice pack. I really do not think the value is there for these secondary items. But if you're interested in getting one or two of these ships on account wide unlock, then I think there, there's a way that you could probably justify it as it would be cheaper than going out and buying those ships on their own for all the characters you'd want them on. If I was buying this bundle uh, right now, I would just get all three ships. Um, the Borg Juggernaut, again, I think is a pretty solid like tank platform, solid torp boat. And it's versatile enough that you can do a lot of different things with it. The Sona Science Dreadnought, again, I don't think it's the best Science Dreadnought anymore. It's definitely been outclassed, but I do think it's fun. And it has some unique functionality that you may find enjoyable that's different from the other Science Dreadnoughts out there. And it has a console on it that works really well with the rest of the Sona ship consoles. So if you have any of the other Sona ships, getting the console off of the Sona Science Dreadnought would probably be a very good thing to do. And the, the Starship trade off of this also might be interesting for some more niche drain focused play styles. The Husnock here is still a really good beam overload platform. And if you can also go out and get the Mirrodorn on account wide unlock from the Captain Picard bundle, then that's going to be a really good beam overload platform to have on account wide unlock. But you do have other options nowadays. Like if, if I was looking to set up a beam overload build right now, I would probably be looking at the legendary Valdor that just came out. That's a 5-2 temporal operative ship that has an enhanced battle cloak on it and just has a lot of firepower potential on it. So the, the Husnock is still good, especially with the Mirrodorn console on it, but just keep in mind that there are other ships that are going to be able to do a beam overload just as effectively nowadays that you can get on account wide unlock cheaper than what this would cost from this bundle. For the secondary stuff, really just don't think it's worth it. If you do get the pick three choice pack and you absolutely do not want one of these ships, then probably the Epic token would be your best bet if you have something you need from there. And if, if you really don't have anything that you would need from an, the Epic token, then I guess the two T six coupons you're, you're paying a couple bucks more than what you would pay if you just bought this, the T6 Sea Store ships on their own during a sale. But that'd probably be something I would consider then. Um, so another question I know some of you will have is where would I rank this bundle in the tier list I did? And I think it'd probably go B tier. C B or C tier, but I'd probably lean towards the B tier, honestly. Um, I can see practical uses where people might want each of the three ships here. They're not all really that great though. Like the, the Sona definitely is a bit lacking, but there are reasons why you might want the console or trade off of it for another build. 
So I think B tier is a solid slot for, for this bundle. It's certainly not one that I would go out and rush to pick up. If they ever did a 75% sale, then sure, I would most certainly grab it. But at the, the price points that they're they're asking for it, it's just it's just very difficult to justify. The the mega pack, I there, there's no way I could see anyone justifying getting that. Um, but the choice pack and getting the three ships. If you have some niche build where again where you would really benefit from any of these, then then sure. And you want to have that on multiple characters, then then yeah, but just hard to justify again, especially with that comparison I made before where you could literally go out and for the cost of this thing, the cost of this this choice pack, you could go out and get 13 different Star Trek games for for that 150 bucks. So it's your money. You you spend it the way you want uh, for me. This is a bundle that I'm going to skip for now. If Cryptic ever does like a 75 percent sale, it's one that I might consider, but there's other bundles that I would certainly prioritize first. So hopefully this video has helped guide you all on, on this bundle and given you some information on what the best options are from it. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to, to drop them down below and I'll get back to you when I can. Thank you again to all channel members and viewers for the continued support. There will be a news video out tomorrow going over some, some other fun news that they announced today. So stay tuned for that. But until then, See you guys around.